நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பனிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video I explained the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Taurus ascendant. In this video I'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Gemini ascendant. Mercury is the ascendant lord for the native of Gemini ascendant. Mercury treats the moon as its worst enemy. On contrary, Moon likes Mercury very much because the relationship between them is perceived as mother and child. Moon, which indicates mother, loves its child Mercury very much. When Moon resides in the ascendant house, it means the native is Gemini ascendant and Gemini Rashi. The native will be extremely intelligent and the degree of intelligence will be based on the strength of the ascendant lord and moon. When a person is Gemini ascendant or Gemini Rashi and when Mercury has a connection with the moon, definitely they would have been connected with astrology. There are hundreds of people who are watching this video right now and definitely you guys will have a strong Mercury 
or connection of Gemini and Moon. In order to make predictions, you have to check the strength of the Ascendant Lord and strength of the Moon. Based on the strength of the Ascendant Lord and Moon, the Dasha of the planet Moon will function. As per Bhavad Bhavam, Moon will be in the 12th house to its own house, which is the second house Lord to the Ascendant. There will not be any shortcoming. If the Moon is Subhatva, it will deliver immense benefits to the native of Gemini Ascendant. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, definitely the Moon should not be in connection with Saturn or Rahu or the Moon should not be heading close towards Amavasya. The Moon should not be Amavasya also. In case if it is Amavasya or when the Moon is heading very close towards Amavasya, definitely it must need an antidote like connection of natural benefits like Jupiter and Venus. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, then Moon resides in second house, it is considered to be very auspicious. That is, when Moon resides in its own house, it is considered to be very auspicious. Moon is the Lord of Wealth, which is the second house. Therefore, when Moon resides in the second house, in its own house, it is considered to be auspicious. The Lord of the House of Wealth will deliver great benefits when it resides in its own house. Please don't make predictions like Moon here is Marakadipadi. Moon will not kill the native because it treats the Ascendant Lord as its own child. However, I will add some exceptions here. As a general rule, a mother will not kill her child. Based on this concept, it is said that during major planetary period of Moon, Moon will not kill the Gemini native. Here arises a question. Haven't any native of Gemini Ascendant died during major planetary period of Moon? Yes, of course, there are native of Gemini Ascendants who died during major planetary period of Moon. If you question whether the native of Gemini Ascendant does not suffer at all during the major planetary period of Moon, I will definitely say there are many people who suffer during the major planetary period of Moon. So what makes the difference? The Subhatva and Pabhatva of the Moon will answer this question. Pabhatva of Moon will definitely deliver worse effects during its major planetary period to the native of Gemini Ascendant. This is the reason I say the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva should be applied as final logical layer. If you understand Subhatva and Pabhatva concepts, you will definitely understand what Moon will deliver during its major planetary period. The second house is the house of wealth, speech and family. When Moon resides in its own house, which is second house to the ascendant, it delivers benefits. Please make predictions based on the strength of the Moon. Now let me explain the effects of Moon in third house, which is Leo. Moon will not deliver such worse effects when it resides in the third house to the ascendant as the third house is Upachayasthana. For the native of Gemini ascendant, when Moon resides in the fourth house, that is Virgo, Moon will gain directional strength. When Moon resides in Virgo, it resides in the house whose Lord is Lagna Lord and very much liked by the Moon. In addition to this, Moon resides in another house of Ascendant Lord. If Venus has got a good strength in his natal chart, then definitely for the native of Gemini Ascendant and Virgo Rashi, Moon will deliver splendid vehicles 
comfort, luxuries, etc. What are the auspicious house effects of the fourth house? Education. The native will be highly educated. By all means, moon will deliver immense benefits to the native of Gemini ascendant. Moon should not be Pabatwa here. It should not be heading towards Amavasya or it should not be Amavasya. In case, if it is waning moon, it should definitely have the connection of Jupiter or Venus. Moon when resides in the fourth house, it will deliver great benefits for the native of Gemini Ascendant and Virgo Rashi. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in 5th house, which is Libra. Here the native is Gemini Ascendant and Libra Rashi. Libra is the 5th house for the native of Gemini Ascendant. As per Bhavad Bhavam, the 2nd house Lord is in the 5th house, which is considered to be auspicious. And it is in the 4th house to its own house Cancer. The Lord of the House of Wealth is in the Quadrant House to its own house and based on this concept, Moon will deliver great benefits. It is an auspicious position for both money and family. To sum up, when Moon resides in the 5th house, it is considered to be a great yoga and now let me explain the effects of moon in 6th house to the ascendant house that is in Scorpio. Moon should not definitely reside in the 6th house to the ascendant. This is the worst position of the moon for the native of Gemini ascendant. The lord of the 2nd house which is house of wealth, house and family gets debilitated in 6th house. And moreover, it is the 6th house to the Ascendant house. And this is the house of Mars. This is the most important point that you should remember. Of course, the house of Mars is a friendly house to the moon. But the house Lord of Scorpio is the worst enemy to Mercury. So if a native is Gemini Ascendant and Scorpio Rashi, then it will affect the wealth, speech and family. There are many points to ponder while moon resides in the 6th house in Scorpio. A luminous planet should not reside in the 6th house to the ascendant. And moon resides in the house whose house lord is treated as a dead enemy by the ascendant lord Mercury. Mars is a functional malefic as well to the native of Gemini Ascendant. And moreover, Moon gets debilitated here. Mars is not an enemy to Moon. They are mutual friends. However, Mars is the worst enemy to Mercury. And it is a functional malefic as well. In case if a person is born as Gemini Ascendant, and Vrikshig Rashi, then Moon should definitely get Subhatva. At least Cancer should get Subhatva. Though the Lord of Second House gets debilitated, there it should have some connection of natural benefits like Jupiter or Venus. Another antidote can be like um, the Moon, if the Moon is heading towards uh, Purnima in waxing phase or if it is Purnima. Or this debilitated moon should have the connection of Jupiter or Venus. Well, now let me explain the effect of moon in the house of Sagittarius, which is the 7th house. When moon resides in 7th house, that is Sagittarius, it is considered to be good. Native will have a good speech. The 2nd house lord is in a quadrant house. Now I am going to explain certain concepts to you. Subtlety of the concept is when the moon is waning and residing in the 7th house it is considered to be very auspicious. 
What is the reason behind this? Do you have any idea? When a malafic is in the quadrant house, it is considered to be very good. Therefore, when the moon is waning, it is considered to be a malafic. And when it resides in the quadrant house, it is considered to be good. In case if moon is waxing, heading towards Purnima, it should be in the trine house, which is the ninth or fifth house. This position is considered to be auspicious. If moon is waning and residing in Sagittarius, then it is considered to be auspicious for the native of Gemini Ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi because when the moon is waning, it is said to be malafic. As a general rule, the malafic should reside in the quadrant and the benefic should reside in the trine. The most important point is that when moon resides in Sagittarius, it should not get Pabatwa connection. In addition to this, if it gets the connection of Jupiter or Venus, it is considered to be more auspicious. If moon is not Pabatwa and if it is a waning moon in the 7th house to the ascendant house, then the native of Gemini ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi will receive a lot of benefits during the major planetary period of moon. If moon is waxing, it will not do any yoga. You have to clearly understand whether moon will deliver mediocre effects or worse effects or benefits or immense benefits. Having said all these, if the native of Gemini ascendant should have a great speech, the second house lord which is responsible for good speech, moon should reside as waning moon in the house of Sagittarius. This brings great yoga to the native of Gemini ascendant. I can see while I was explaining a subscriber was posting his comment. He says that he is native of Gemini ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi and it is a waning moon in Sagittarius and he has got such a great skill of communicating. These people are very frank whether it hurts others or not they will be very frank. All these qualities will be brought by the Lord of the second house and of course the connection of the planets with the second house. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 8th house to the ascendant house which is Capricorn. A luminous planet should not reside in the 8th house to the ascendant house. However, when moon resides in the 8th house that is Capricorn, it will aspect its own house Cancer which is the second house to the ascendant. When moon resides in Capricorn, as per Bhavad Bhavam, it will reside in the 7th house to its own house. There will be some shortcomings since moon resides in the 8th house to the ascendant and Mercury treats moon as its enemy. In case if moon has got a lot of light energy, it is not considered to be unfavorable. Because when moon resides in Capricorn, it aspects its own house, Cancer, and strengthens the house with its light energy. The native himself will set up a family. Therefore, it is very important that even though moon resides in the 8th house to the ascendant, it should have a lot of light energy to compensate the shortcoming. If it has the connection of Jupiter or Venus, it is good. In addition to this, if moon has got its own light energy, let us say if it is waxing moon, it is considered to be auspicious. In this case, it will not deliver worse effects. In case if the moon is heading towards Amavasya, or if it has a connection of a malafic like Saturn or Rahu, and ascendant is weak, then you have to make the prediction like the family is spoiled. The Pabatva moon will definitely spoil the house. Moon is the significator of mind. Moon signifies the mother. When moon is Pabatva in the 8th house to the ascendant, it means that the native does not have a good mother and does not have a good mind. 
I have seen such charts in my experience. There will be conjunction of Moon, Saturn and Rahu in Capricorn. I have seen these charts in the years of 1990. Those people who were born in the month of May in the year of 1990, uh, this planetary position can be seen. All these three planets were in Capricorn uh, such as Moon, Rahu and Saturn. If the native was born as Gemini Ascendant, the family was completely spoiled. Definitely the native would not have got a good mother. If Moon is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, then it indicates the native does not have a good mother. It is a simple rule that you can test in any natal chart. You can identify as a next step whether the mother exists or not based on the light energy of the moon, whether it is waxing or waning. As a third step, by checking the fourth house of the ascendant house, you can identify whether the mother died soon after the birth of the child or she is still alive giving a lot of problems. There are certain situations in life that one person cannot express about their mother in the society. There are certain situations where a native cannot point out and address their mother as mother. There are certain people who would feel like they lose their dignity if they address their mother in the society. If mother had taken a wrong step in her life, that will be indicated by the conjunction of Saturn, Moon and Rahu. This will be true if this planetary conjunction happens especially in Capricorn or Aquarius because these houses are own houses of Saturn. If the same conjunction, that is the conjunction of Moon, Saturn and Rahu takes place in Cancer, it is a different situation. Because when Moon, Saturn and Rahu resides in Cancer, Moon resides in its own house. Here, the mother will escape from a crucial situation. If a mother cannot escape from a crucial situation, or a bad situation, then it is the house of Capricorn or it can be Aquarius. Both Capricorn and Aquarius are the houses, own houses of Saturn. Because the moon is a luminous planet and Saturn is a dark planet and they both are enemies. You can see how many predictions we take based on the conjunction and the houses where the conjunctions takes place. When there is a conjunction of Moon, Saturn and Rahu in Capricorn house, without any connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus, then the native would not be able to express about their mother in the society. It will indicate the mother does not exist or there is no good terms between mother and the native. In case if the fourth house to the ascendant house was also affected, it means that the mother would have died soon after the delivery or even after two or three months post delivery. All these will be delivered by moon when the moon is waning, heading very close to Amavasya and debilitated with the connection of malefics like Saturn or Rahu. In this case, definitely the native cannot express his mother in the society, which will end up in an embarrassment. This is what delivered by the connection of Moon, Saturn and Rahu. Now, let me explain the effects of Moon in the ninth house to the ascendant, which is Aquarius. When Moon resides in Aquarius, as per Bhavad Bhavam, Moon will reside in the 8th house to its own house cancer. Indeed, it resides in a house whose house lord is a dark energy planet and which is an enemy to Moon. However, this is the house of Bhagya for the ascendant. Therefore, in order to make predictions, you have to understand the light energy of the Moon. It is good to a certain extent 
when moon resides in the ninth house to the ascendant that is aquarius moon residing in the ninth house will deliver benefits to a certain extent well now i'm going to explain about the effects of the moon in the 10th house which is pisces it is a good position here it establishes the connection of the second and 10th house and the 10th house is karmasthana though moon here loses its digbala that is directional strength it is in a good position the speech of the person will be really good and the native will gain through this connection well what about the effects of moon in the 11th house that is aries this is more auspicious for the native of gemini ascendant when moon resides in 10th house or 11th house it is considered to be good again you have to check the light energy of the moon i don't want to repeat this point often Definitely for making the prediction of the moon you have to check the light energy of the moon. When the second house lord is in the 10th house it means that the native will earn money by communication by speech. Question that their second house lord is in the 10th house but their profession is not related to speech or communication. What is the reason? you might question when the native is gemini ascendant and pisces rashi then the native will earn their bread by the profession that is related to speech or communication merely by checking one point you cannot make complete predictions you have to check the house lord of the 10th house that is jupiter the next step is to check which planet resides in the second house when you collect all these rules and apply them together you will definitely find that what vedic astrology says is 100% true you will have chosen your profession definitely based on the rules that vedic astrology indicates When the second house lord is in the 10th house as per bhavad bhavam it will be in the 9th house to its own house This is considered to be a good position You will earn well you will have a good professional life Similarly to the moon in Pisces all the above benefits are assured when the second house lord is in 10th house from Cancer in good status that is when moon resides in 11th house that is in aries it is considered to be more auspicious than its position in 10th house here the second house lord will be in the 10th house to its own house cancer this is such a great benefit for the native again when moon resides in the 11th house it establishes the connection of second house 9th house and 11th Again when moon resides in the 11th house it establishes the connection of second house 11th house and 9th when moon resides in 11th house it delivers great benefits and great yoga to the native of gemini ascendant now let me explain about the effects of moon in the house of taurus which is 12th house Though a luminous planet residing in 12th house is not considered to be auspicious here moon is exalted so it gets tanabala the house lord gets exalted when the second house lord gets exalted in 12th house to the ascendant house it is going to give gains not in an explicit way when the second house lord gets exalted in 12th house then the native will gain through share market gambling etc based on the sthana bala and subhatva it will deliver gains to the native to sum up it will definitely deliver great benefits to the native since it has got sthana bala here by exaltation in my next video i'm going to explain about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of cancer ascendant 
Well, this is question time. What does the planetary conjunction of Moon, Saturn and Rahu in Capricorn or Aquarius indicates? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all videos, English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.write to us at gmail.com. Thank you.